Okay, we're ready to work in Illustrator now, just kind of give us the introduction to Illustrator. And so Illustrator is almost exactly like Photoshop in terms of the layers and palettes and stuff like that that you can work around with. So here's our toolbar again. Tools are kind of the same here. Here's our palettes uh, area. And then this is our menus. And so the workspace and all the Adobe products are going to be pretty much exactly the same. So that's great because you're able to work with Photoshop um, in a real, uh, and, and once you learn that, everything else kind of works its way out and pretty much the same thing. The, the way, the most important thing to remember is that Photoshop is a pixel based program, so it's a raster based program, so it's working with manipulating these pixels on a grid. Uh, Illustrator is a vector based program, so Illustrator uses these mathematical vector equations to draw shapes and fill them with colors and stuff like that. And so Illustrator and Photoshop kind of have different sort of mathematical structure behind them and so it's important to kind of keep that in mind but it's really great when you can use the two things together uh, in, in one um, you know for one project so for what we're going to do today we're going to use Illustrator to uh, add some text and shapes and things like that for our uh, stencil making project um, so what, what we want to do is we want to go to um, file new and we're going to make a, a new image that's much like we would do in Photoshop or something like that. And we're gonna go to um, go to print up here where it says what kind of new document we want. And instead of letter, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go to uh, 7.5 inches, right? So you have to actually type that in. Uh, you wanna do the same thing here. We're gonna go 10 inches tall. And that automatically changes that into, into points for us or into, uh, it's a different, different system of measurement but it's the right size so when we import the Photoshop file that we started earlier it'll kind of show up in there <clears throat> and so again uh, you know Illustrator has all these different options in it hopefully you've already messed with Illustrator a little bit before you got got this far but if we go to file place now we can go in and we can actually place our image that we created earlier so I'm gonna go ahead and try and find that um, that image in here. So again, it's, you have to have a, a system that makes sense for you and for your, um, you know, your mind, and just got to keep stuff organized. It's really important that you know where your things are. So if I go into my tutorials here, there it is. So that's the Photoshop file we worked on before, where we knocked out the background. So I'm going to click place on that, and it kind of gives me this little icon asking me where I want to put it. So I'm going to stick it up here in the top left corner. And that just, you can see it fills it. If I want to resize a little bit, I can, you know, again, hold down the shift key to keep the uh, proportions constrained. But I'm going to go ahead and just keep it, go all the way out to the edge because I know that that's what I want. And uh, um, yeah, I can just click OK. So now if I go to my layers palette, you can see that I have these layers here. And I have um, my Photoshop background here. And then I have my. Um, uh, you know, I have a layer. And so Illustrator doesn't automatically create new layers for you the way Photoshop did. Illustrator actually really um, is a program that you have to decide you want a layer. So what I'm going to suggest we do is that we lock our first layer. So layer one, we're going to lock that thing. And then we're going to add another layer on top of it. So you can see that as long as I have layer two selected, that's the layer I'm working on. If I have layer one selected, um, that'll be the layer I'm working on. So you know, let's say I grab my brush tool here, but you'll notice that it's I'm trying to draw on this and it won't draw, and that's because I had this layer locked, which is why you want to lock them so you don't accidentally put stuff someplace you don't want it to go. All right, so let's say I go to layer two here, and I've got my um, I've got my layer kind of in uh, you know, and I know that this is where I'm going to put things. So the object for this particular assignment is for us to combine the Photoshop image, which is kind of a pixel-based image, with two layers of um, vector-based images to create a new kind of a um, kind of a um, object, a, a new print, basically. So we're going to print these colors. So Illustrator is going to help us figure out what colors we're going to print over the top of things. So, um, <clears throat> so what we want to do is we're going to want to start by let's say we want to add some text in because the idea is that here is that you're going to make um, Kind of a propaganda poster, right? So if you just click and drag with the type tool, it's going to give you a space that you can put text into. So let's go, you know, I 
So if we do that, now we have this thing that says Foundations Propaganda, right? And you can see that it all fits within the text box. It's probably, you know, that's probably okay, but maybe not actually exactly what you want for what we're going to do in this uh, class. So if you wanted to fill this with a lot of small text, that would be one way to do it. But what you probably will want to do is you just want to grab the found this and just type in Now when you see, oh, there it is, it's a little bit easier to handle than this empty space in here. So I'm just going to click and select this and hit the delete button. So anytime you see the little box with the handles, you know you have that object selected, you can delete it. So I'm going to go in here and then I can change my typeface. So if I want to change this to you know, something else, I, I can do that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go, with, go with Helvetica because I always do. And we'll go with just regular old Helvetica. And then we're going to go with uh, like a bold oblique. And then we can change the scale of it as well. So we can just make that big, right? <clears throat> so like, let's say this was going to be my uh, type that I wanted to use. Um, so I wanted to make something that looks like it's kind of propaganda-like, right? So um, <clears throat> so that's that's fine. That's, that's OK. But it's probably a little bit, um, doesn't look that propaganda-ish to me. So I think what I would want to do is maybe rotate this. So if you click on this, you can see I can actually resize my font um, this way, but it's probably better to do that over here than to stretch it out. Usually when you stretch type faces out, it's frowned upon by the typography people. So, but um, the other thing that I could do is I can actually rotate it. So if I just mouse over one of these handles here, I can actually sort of turn it on its side. So that could be kind of cool to make it do this. So I can, uh, you know, put that there. I can adjust it uh, as much as I want to to make it more propaganda-like. I can also shift constrain the proportions and that'll change the size of it and so I can make it fit into my into my image, right? So that's a little better. That looks a little more propaganda-y, a little propaganda-like. Um, and so I can add as much text as I want to, make it look cool, uh, move it around. The type tool will allow you to do things like, um, you know, type in an area, type on a path. So if I want to um, draw a specific path, I can do that. And the way to do that would be to grab the um, would be to grab the pen tool here and just kind of um, you know click and drag a whole bunch of a path on there and then uh, <laughs> it's making a mess. But if I click on my type tool now and I click on that, it's going to let me type stuff on that type on that path as it goes through. And I can actually go in there with the white arrow tool and like adjust that. So hopefully you've already gotten a lot of these um, skills with the type and, or with the path, um, drawing paths and stuff like that from your earlier tutorials. But if not, you know, keep in mind that that stuff is possible. You can type vertically, all these different things that you can do um, with type. So, so once you get your type kind of set, what we would want to do is we want to pick a color, right? So let's just click over here and um, I'm going to go with red on this because, you know, it's kind of a red, white, and blue idea here. Um, and I'm going to know that that's my second layer, right? So the second layer is going to be red. I'm going to just uh, go ahead and, like, um, click on the um, on the lock button. And I'm going to make a third layer, which, uh, you know, I'll call this one. I'll probably just type blue on here, right? So that's blue. Um, And I'll do the same thing here. So that just means I'm able to... So now if I wanted to add some more type to this, let's say... Uh, I could just go like... Oops, let's see, I didn't work. Oops, because I don't have a layer selected down here, so you have to make sure you have a layer selected. Now I can type. I can do that. And again, I can make it as big or as small as I want to by messing with it. Here you can change the typeface around, whatever it is that you kind of want to do on that. So let's say I do this, and I, uh, you know, again, I want to rotate it a little bit. And then uh, I would want to change that. So I'm going to, let's change this into like a, like a blue color, which is what I'm going to use. So now I've got my red, I've got my blue layers. And I'm going to kind of get a sense for what's going to happen where these two things go over the top of each other, but it's really hard to kind of 
guess at or approximate what that's going to look like when we print them. So what, what I like to do just as a way of um, figuring out how to make make more sense out of this is I like to come in here, I like to adjust my um, uh, my blending mode. And so if you see on all of these palettes over here, you have all these options, right? All these different things that you can do. Um, and one of the things that you can do is you can change uh, basically the opacity and you can change the um, uh, blending mode. So if you go in here and you just kind of are trying to figure out, well, where is it? I can't find it. You can always go over here to window and go to um, opacity. Sorry, transparency. Not opacity so and I could just dock that right here if I'm stuck and then I can go to uh, where it says normal and if I just do multiply that kind of gives me see how that changed that into uh, um, so it kind of lets the blue one be a little more transparent to let me see ah when I print the red and the blue over each other that's probably something like what it's going to look like so again that's under window transparency and then you just change the blending mode um, you could change the red blending mode so if I select my red object and change the blending mode on that. Right now it's in normal. If I change that to multiply, that'll help me when those two things layer over each other too. So, um, and if I change the layer order, so if I put the red one over the blue one, um, you know, again, it'll let me see kind of what happens when those two things are, which order they're printed in. So that's the basics uh, for now. I'll do another tutorial here in a moment about how to, um, you know, how to continue to manipulate uh, shapes and stuff like that. But this will at least get you going for um, you know, the three layers. So when we go to print this out, we're going to have three layers that we work with um, as we go to print.